Hey guys, my name is Mavi and I've spent the last 14 years in the plastic surgery and beauty industry, working alongside some of the best plastic surgeons in the country. Now I don't work for anybody, so I have unbiased opinions about hundreds of surgeons from across the world and I can help you achieve the body of your dreams. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Big Butts No Lies podcast. Season four, what? Can you believe it? It's season four of the show, and I can't believe I'm here with you guys for another year. And honestly, I don't want to be anywhere else. So for the first episode of the season, it's again, just me. Hi. Hello, everybody. I am so happy to be here with you for season four, and I want to take this episode and kind of give you a heads up of what we're planning for season four. Season four, I'm taking it back to the basics, 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 basics. So I'm going to take you guys through the whole process of how to plan and have your surgery. I know that although I wish I could work with everybody one-on-one, I really don't I, I don't have the capability of working with every single one of you one-on-one. So I want to give you the pathway to do it on your own and be confident in your decisions. So for the first episode of this season, I'm going to take it really, you guys, back to the basics. And we're going to start with how to prepare yourself emotionally and mentally and financially. How are you going to pay for this surgery? So in this episode, I'm going to go over a little bit of kind of the new year, new me vibe that's usually happening around January. We get a lot of inquiries because women are really ready to make those changes in their lives and they're ready to take back their bodies, take back their freedom and their confidence. So January is always a really, really good month in plastic surgery. We get to talk to lots of people and really get them in the right direction because one of the things that we haven't really talked about a lot on the show is What if you're not even at your goal weight? What if you're not even at a BMI that's healthy enough for surgery? For example, if your BMI is 54, you're not going to find a surgeon who will do your surgery at a BMI of 54 unless it's uh, skin removal, specifically like a paniculectomy or something like that. But just because you're not at the right BMI doesn't mean that you're not already thinking of being on this path, especially if you've had if you've been overweight for a long time or for your whole life and you want to get back in control of yourself and your body. Plastic surgery is often one of those first thoughts that come to mind for a lot of women. And unfortunately, in my career, I've always had to kind of explain sometimes you have to lose the weight first and then come in for the plastic surgery. So in season four, I really want to help you guys kind of get there. How do you even get there? Last episode, I told y'all about, I had y'all here, one of my girls, and how her surgery has changed her life. And I've talked to y'all about how my surgery has changed my life. And I'm so thankful to be here with you because of the confidence that I gained after I had my surgery. So taking it back to the basics, I'm going to start off with who am I? Who's Mavi? Who are you listening to? Okay, so my name is Mavi. I've been working in plastic surgery. I started off as a medical assistant and I worked really through every single position in the office until I became a patient coordinator. And then I was a patient coordinator for a lot, a long part of my career. So what made me think that I should be up here talking to you? Um, for one, I don't work for any specific surgeon. I work for myself. I created this show to help women navigate through the plastic surgery industry. And I really don't have a vested interest in who you go to. I don't care who you go to. I just want you to be safe. I just want you to get the body of your dreams. I want you to be happy with what you get. I don't care who who does your surgery as long as they're doing it safe and they're giving you the result that you're looking for. With that came such a freedom. Like I don't work for anybody so I can feature whoever I want. I can fe- talk about what I want to talk about. And what I want to talk about is what I was seeing and hearing every day while I worked in plastic surgery offices. I would sit as a patient coordinator, you are in the room with your surgeon and the patients. So I would get to hear 
every single patient's story and what surgeries would be appropriate for them and why we couldn't do certain things. And that knowledge, I soaked it up for 15 years, you guys, 15 years, I soaked it all up. And during the pandemic, it was time. I had to make a change um, because of the pandemic. Daycares closed down. All this stuff was happening around my life. I was in the middle of a divorce. It was crazy. And I don't even know, honestly, how I decided to just go launch a podcast, but I had stories that I had heard and seen while I was working in the plastic surgery, my last coordinator position that my super comfortable, cushiony patient coordinator position. I saw a lot of stuff more than I had ever seen botched work more than I had ever seen. We had patients coming in wanting us to redo tummy tucks that they had in Mexico, wanting us to redo BBLs and breast augmentations and tummy tucks that were done in Florida. And people were just getting terribly botched. People coming from the Dominican Republic looking terrible. Like it was so shocking to me because I had not been in an environment where I was routinely seeing botched patients. It just so happened that last office that I was at, one of the surgeons worked at the hospital in the emergency room as the uh, one of the plastic surgeons. So when they had cases that needed a plastic surgeon, they would call him. And so he, we would see things like BBL infections, abscesses, pus coming out of BBLs, booties, uh, tummy tucks opening, like incisions opening all the way up where you can literally stick your hand in it if you wanted to. Um, breast augmentations where wim- or breast reductions, lifts, surgeries where women are losing their nipples. It was traumatic. (laughs) You guys have no idea how traumatic it is to watch somebody who's been botched suffer. And I can't even imagine as a botched patient, how traumatizing and traumatic it is for them. And for like, I can't put into words how life-changing a botched result can be. So because I saw all of that, I knew I have to get out there. I have to spread the word. I have to help women find the right plastic surgeon because if not, they're going to get botched. They're going to end up in places that they're not going to get the results that they're looking for. So it became my mission to help women navigate through the plastic surgery journey, it was like, it's my jam. I've been doing it for so long. I love it. And with all of that, I want to give you this message. So no matter where you are in your surgery journey, if you are at your ideal weight, or if you're not at your ideal weight, I want you to know that you are worthy and you deserve to have the body of your dreams and you can do anything. If you're not at the right weight right now, if you are in the 300s, in the high 200s, in the 400s, you're probably not at the right weight to have plastic surgery. But that doesn't mean that you can't have plastic surgery at some point when you get to the appropriate weight. And how do you know what the appropriate weight is? Well, first, I would calculate my BMI. So the way you calculate your BMI, you're going to go on Google, Google, G-O-O-G-L-E, okay, enter, and then you're going to put in the Google search bar, BMI calculator. And when you put that in, you're going to find one of the websites, click on it, put your information in, they're going to ask you how tall you are and how much you weigh, and if you're a male or a female and how old you are. And then it's going to give you your BMI. So... Most of the time, surgeons have a BMI requirement. So, for example, your BMI has to be between, well, really it's not like a between, but it's more of a, it can't be higher than. So, most surgeons, depending on wherever you go, whoever you go to, they're all different. 
there's high BMI surgeons who will do your surgery when you're like in the high 30s, like 37, 38. There are surgeons who cut you off if your BMI is over 28. There's surgeons that cut you off if your BMI is over 30. Once you get your calculation, you're going to figure out what's my BMI. If my BMI is in a healthy range, according to the website, okay, healthy according to the website. I'm not saying you're not healthy. I'm not saying anything about you specifically. All I'm saying is BMI. Okay. I know BMI gets a lot of bad, bad energy and like it's discriminating. But I mean, if your BMI is 48, that tells me that you're not healthy enough to have plastic surgery. You could have other things that could happen during your surgery that could cause you to have bad experience. I don't want that for you. So while you're on your journey to get to the appropriate weight, your BMI, right? The right BMI for you, for your height and weight. In that time, you can also develop other parts of your person. So if you've been listening to the show and you've been listening to me, you know that part of why I'm doing what I'm doing is because after I had my surgery and I was like, oh yeah, my I got my mommy makeover. Now my life's going to change. My husband's going to be nicer to me. Ex-husband now. He's going to be nicer to me. Everything's going to be so much better. And then I had my surgery and he wasn't nicer to me. (laughs) And I was like, oh, wait, now I'm acting like my own patients when they're sitting there and they're, I'm telling them don't do it for somebody else. I was doing it for me, but thinking maybe it'll make my husband nicer to me. But then when it didn't, it made me think, oh, I guess I have a lot of work to do on the inside too. Having that you're beautiful on the outside doesn't doesn't automatically translate to the inside. So you have to work on yourself while you're in your plastic surgery journey. And I believe that in order for you to really enjoy your results, and have realistic expectations is to develop your character and your self-esteem and your confidence but while you're going through the surgery journey before, during, and after. And honestly, for the rest of our lives, we should be working on our confidence and being better people. So that r- reminds me, y'all know I'm reading this book. I told y'all about it last season. It's called The Inner Work. And I don't know how many of you guys are into manifestations or uh, words of affirmation or anything like that. But if you listen to the show, you know I'm so into it because I swear I wrote this life down years ago and I said, it's going to happen. And here I am with my very own plastic surgery podcast and I get to live the life of my dreams. I get to be with my kids and take them to school and bring them home and cook them lunch and be with you guys, talk to you, hear about your stories, be a part of your transformations, all of that. I'm living my dream life and I'm so, so happy. So I want you to live your dream life too and be so, so happy. So these are some of the, the words of affirmation that are in this book that when I was reading them, you guys, I got shivers and tingles all through my body while I was reading them. So I'm going to read them to you. And I want you to, in 2024, believe these. It's a ton of them, so I'm not going to read all of them, but here are some. I am already worthy. I forgive myself and others. I am wanted and needed. I am seen. I am free from my past. I have no regrets. I face my fears with courage. I expect the best case scenario. I have everything I need. I am fully satisfied in my life. I easily celebrate the success of others. I have no enemies. I am honest. I go with the flow. I trust I will always be okay. I am unique and gifted. I am talented. I am inspiring and inspired. I am a success. My life is a success. I see only opportunities and my life has extraordinary meaning. 
I mean, come on. After you read that, how do you not feel pumped and feel like you can take the world on? You can. You can take the world on. In 2024, in season four, it's new year, new me, and I'm going to help you get there from start to finish. In season four, one thing you will notice is that the episodes will be a little bit shorter. I don't want to waste too much time, too much of your time. I want to make every episode fruitful, straight to the point, getting you what you need so you can actually go on with your life and not have to worry anymore. So to recap, the most important thing of 2024 is going to be love yourself. You deserve it. You're worthy. And I'm here for you. I will see you guys next week. So if you're thinking about having plastic surgery, but you don't really know where to start, I'm your girl. I have three packages, actually four packages. My number one most purchased package is the surgery blueprint. So with the surgery blueprint, I help you find a surgeon and I help you get ready for surgery. So we kind of prepare you for what's to come, helping you figure out where your recovery house or who's going to take care of you or figuring out all of your caretaking situation. We do that for you. My second most popular package is actually my express transformation package with that one we are helping you find a surgeon we're helping you prepare for surgery but we're also giving you a nutritionist and a mental health coach and a concierge wellness what the team does is make sure that all of the ties the dots the i's are dotted and the t's are crossed and you have everything ready for your surgery